Okay, today we're going to talk about the importance of white space in uh, UI and UX design. Um, there are many reasons to use white space, um, and we're going to go through some of them, and we're going to use this little card as an example. Uh, so this card was created, and it's basically just kind of default. You can see everything's in there, but it is fairly crammed together. It's fine, but it's not good. Um, so what we need to do here is start increasing and playing with our, our white space. Um, now, when it comes to white space, there are many benefits to it, um, not just aesthetic, but also from a accessibility, usability, and a readability perspective. So from a readability perspective, you can see that everything is kind of crammed in here and there's no break visually between any of this. So aside from the heading and the date being a slightly different font than the button and the text, there's no hierarchy. There's really sort of nothing there to kind of let it, let it breathe. Um, and the more a design can breathe, the more easier it is for you to scan. Um, white space also lets you denote hierarchy. So using different um, sets of spacing or different spacing gaps, you can denote what items are grouped together and what items are separate, or you can give emphasis to one item over the other. Um, so let's start playing with it a little bit. Uh, so, I mean, the first thing we can do here is we can just ramp up our overall spacing, right? And you can see kind of like, even just upping it to, to 10 here gives it a little bit more space. You can kind of, you know, see the difference already. We ramp it up to 20. It's a bit excessive, but it's starting to look a little more like you could actually denote a difference between, I would say, the three sections here, the heading, the date, the content, the actions, and obviously the image. Um, and then the other thing you can do is we can start giving it some space here. And that just starts to give it a little extra breathing room. So already it's not looking great, but it's definitely more readable. So when it comes to white space and spacing in general, there are, let me just put this back to like five, put this back to 10 while I talk about this. There are different, there are two different kind of main methods of doing it. And honestly, I don't think there's either, there's a right one or there's a wrong way. There's the Fibonacci spacing method, which means you use the golden rule or the Fibonacci sequence to go up starting what, 5 to 8 to 13 to 21. Uh, this isn't used very much, um, but it is out there and it is a totally viable spacing plan. Uh, the other one is your 8 pixel grids. So that just means everything goes up by 8. So you have 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, blah, 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 blah. So let's apply one of these. Let's apply, I don't know, let's go with the Fibonacci one because it's got a graphic, it's kind of cool. So if we start here, our heading, now these can actually probably stay at zero because of the, the line height of the text. And we can get into line height here in a minute. But if we leave these at zero and we set uh, our spacing to eight, or actually let's set our our button spacing to 13. We'll skip eight. We'll set these to 13. Okay, and then we'll set our padding to 21. See, now already that is actually looking a lot nicer. So we have consistent spacing. I mean, you could set this to the lowest one, which is five, but I like that it's you know, kind of tied to the heading a bit more, but we can leave it. That's fine. Um, so now you can see that this 
is an element, this is an element, and these two are an element. Now, if we want to give these a little bit more, let's say the buttons, we want to separate them and give them even more prominence, then I would actually go in and I would give them a little extra spacing. I'd add another 13 to that. So I think that's what we used here, right? Yeah. Or, actually, if you wanted to give them 21, you'd give these an extra... Help me out with the math here. Eight. And that would give you a 21 spacing here versus a 13 spacing here. Either way, I actually liked it with the 13 because uh, it gave it a bit more breathing room. So there you go. You can already see that the it, it is a lot more legible. If we can just duplicate this and bring all these back down to the original values. There we go. You can see the original one here and this one. This one's a lot more aesthetically pleasing. It's a lot easier to read. You can denote the content. This is further away than this. These are separated, so there's actually a hierarchy of information. And you know what? It, it helps give padding around your calls to action so that you're not accidentally, if you're on mobile, you're not finger tapping the wrong one. Uh, the other thing we can talk about is spacing is line height. So, I mean, these have a 10 pixel font, so I would go with a line height to keep with the Fibonacci thing. I would go with a line height of 13 just to give that text a little more breathing room as well. And you can see it's a lot nicer, it's a lot cleaner design. It takes up a little more space, so if you're trying to cram things in, then I would say maybe you don't need to cram things in as much. But you can see clearly the difference here between no white space and an appropriate amount of white space. If you want to uh, leave comments a bit on white space or talk about it more, go ahead, drop them in the comment section, like, subscribe, uh, check out the other videos, check out my Patreon, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.